What up y'all, it's T-Tar, and today we're going to be talking about Kentaro getting multiple forms in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So this is part of the train of videos I've been making. We've been trying to speculate that this is Kentaro, the final mythical Pokemon. And this is a really cool video I've been wanting to make, and it's... As you can see in the title, it's suggesting that Kintaro could have multiple forms, which at first is an absurd thought, right? We don't even know what he looks like. How can we jump to this conclusion? We're going to have a bit of fun with this. So it starts with Ku's tweet here. Remember we were covering it last time? It's actually a lot of fun to play around with this riddle because it implies that in the same update that we get this new mythical Pokemon in, that there is an X amount of forms introduced. So let me first tell you my theory. And it starts with what I was talking about last video. So last video, I was telling you a story about how Kintaro could play out, which is pretty much he originates from Area Zero with Ogre Pond. And one day they left with special Terra Crystals and went to Kitakami, which after hearing that, when you look at how the game portrays it, it fits the story, right? All the mask maker says is one day the man came to Kitakami from a foreign land with an ogre. It works out. In that story, I was trying to give a reason as to how Ogre Pun can terrestrialize with those masks. It is a mystery. It makes no sense that Terrapagus is the only Pokemon that can terrestrialize out of the thousand that exist. But then Ogre Pond can do it with seemingly no connection to Tropicus. I was telling you an idea where those Terra Crystals have some important value to Ogre Pond that when they were made into the masks, it kind of reflected the old experiences she shared and she was able to terrestrialize into them. Using the four masks, Ogre Pond can change its base typing as well as terrestrialize into a further state and become a pure version of that mask's typing. It's kind of crazy. And this is when we get to my theory, which is that Kintaro can wear the masks too. Now, hold up. See, the first time I thought this, I was thinking, this would make a lot of sense. Because the deep connection Ogre Pond would have with those Terra Crystals and the masks is the same connection Kintaro would have. Kintaro, in theory, based off this idea, would be able to use the masks as well. At first, I was thinking, well, does this sound right? Because the masks are Ogre Pond's thing. Ogre Pond is the teal mask Pokemon. She's the one who wields the four masks. It kind of makes her unique to be the only one that does that. But the masks never were just hers. The masks always were both of theirs. And in fact, when you look at the cutscenes, the man is the one often shown wearing the teal mask. While Ogre Pond, they showed her wearing the ashen gray mask. They probably all swap between them all, but that's the point. The masks belong to them both. They both wanted to blend in in Kitakami, so the masks was both of their salvations. And if the masks' Terra Crystals derive from something that allowed Ogre Pond to reach different forms and terrestrial states, the same could happen to this man. So now with that idea in mind, we go back to Ku's tweet here, right? The final part after the Indigo Disc will introduce one Pokemon as well as an X amount of forms. This X, the reason he's hiding it could be something easy to identify like a three because the three is very easily Ogre Pond's forms. Also, let me clarify this tweet a bit, right? This is talking about non terrasto states because terrasto states are like Mega Evolution temporary forms because if you counted terrasto states, the six would go up to a 10 for Ogre Pond's four and then this one would go up to a two to count Tropagus as Stellar. And so this X would have to represent alternate non terrestrial forms. I think it'd be so bad as if after all we've learned about Ogre Pond being this unique mask Pokemon, that you turn around and someone else can wear the masks too. It'd be so cool. And now to get into how this would work. So let's say Kintaro is like a fighting type. When he wears the Heart Flame mask, he would turn into a fighting fire type. The Wellspring mask, fighting water type. He would be morphing his type to the exact same way as Ogre Pond. In fact, like a year from the future, you should be able to look on Bulbapedia and it'll call Ogre Pond and Kintaro like the mask duo, you know? Because they both wield the masks, kind of like, you know, the Laddie twins, Mew duo. Okay, so now let's have a bit more fun with this idea. So obviously Gorilla Man here, there's a base form like this. Here's how I think the game could deliver something like this to us. In its base form, Kintaro is always wearing the teal mask. See in the cutscenes, Kintaro wearing this teal mask? I think we're not going to be fully free to use all the Kintaros, right? Base Gorilla Kintaro, then Human Kintaro. That's what we're speculating, right? The game is going to default to only giving us four versions of Kintaro. He's always wearing the teal mask when you download him. And then you can equip the Heart Flame, the Wellspring, or the Ashen Gray mask to him. But if you don't equip anything, he's always wearing the teal mask. And it makes him a perfect counterpart to Ogre Pun. But I think what would be cool 
is if he doesn't wear the mask the same way Ogre Pun does. Because Ogre Pun, she fully covers her face, right? I think it'd be cool if, just to differentiate it, that he only half wears it. You know when you can wear a mask covering only the side of your head? So that you can still see Kentaro's face. Because I want to kind of divide Ogre Pun and Kentaro's styles using these masks more and more. And so the next division I want to make is that... I think Kentaro shouldn't be able to use the masks as well as Ogre Pun. I think Kentaro should be unable to terastalize with these masks. And so only Ogre Pun for some reason is genius enough to tap in and go terasto state. But all this man can do is just change his base form with it. And the other reason I like making him less capable mask wise is because Kentaro is already super strong in his own character. The masks would just be an added bonus. And yeah, he would get his own signature move like Ivy Kajo, where he uses the masks typing to deliver a hit. Remember, Kintaro in mythology is often shown with an axe. So he could make, I mean, an axe is brutal, <laughs> but he could make some kind of uh, energy axe and swing it with fire, power, grass, rock, or water. And that would work to Kintaro's character. Or the other fun path they could take is that Kintaro's base form doesn't change when he wears the masks. It's purely stylistic. So you would just see a different mask on the side of his face when he's fighting, depending on the mask. And it would also change his axe move to that typing. But he can terrestrialize the same way Ogre Pun can. But I like the first idea better. I want only Ogre Pun to get the four terrestrial states. And all he does is just like second hand be capable of wielding them. It's such a fun idea. So the one Pokemon, Kintaro, has three forms. That would be the implication. Or this X could also include stuff that would only be shown in the movies. Still a theory, right? Like his human form and then his actual base form where he doesn't have any mask on. But I think for the sake of the Kintaro we get to download to our games, he'd be locked to always at least wearing the teal mask. And that'd be cool. It depends honestly how Game Freak ultimately tells how the masks were made. If Kintaro is the mythical Pokemon, I have a good feeling they will explain how uh, Ogre Pond's masks work, which would be a huge reveal. Okay, so now to talk about some other details, right? So, if Kintaro can wield all these masks, how in the hell did he lose to the Loyal Three? And in fact, I think he only fought two of them. I think Monkey Dory was hanging out outside, while Fez and Dippity and Okidoki were the ones who stole all the masks. And it's because, look at the cutscene again, right? The two Loyals are here scouring through the masks, and the man walks in, in his base form. So he would have fought them without the masks. At the end of the fight, he is holding the teal mask. Which again, that's why I want him to be locked to it. It's like special to both of them. So maybe for a short while at the end, he tried fighting with the teal mask's power. But it's not like he was able to wield all four at once. In that case, he probably would have beaten them. And also, in terms of Ogre Pond being able to beat four, <laughs> all four loyal Pokemon with the teal mask, which is an inferior typing to the poison types they are, while this man lost to two of them, it could be two paths. One, Ogre Pond is just stronger than him. Or two, it's because he was more focused on defending the masks more so than beating them. And maybe he missed his opportunity and he just quickly got beat. I mean, the masks are clearly important to them, right? It's how they blend in. And apparently it was worth doing a death match over where this man just died. Anyhow, that's my theory. Make sure I shank that like button. Is it time for a part six? <laughs> I could keep making these for days. Maybe I'll take a pause on the Kintaro videos, but yeah, I want to hear y'all's thoughts. Let me know how you think this sounds and if you think I sound crazy or not. I think this would be so badass. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.